Now we're going to be doing activity 3.1.6, which is about commercial floor systems. Uh, just the introduction real fast. Commercial floor systems have to withstand greater loads and heavier traffic than what does a house floor. And they are built with very different components than a house floor. Concrete is most commonly used for commercial structures. And we're going to take a look at two different uh, flooring systems. One will be a cast in place flooring system, and the other one will be hollow core precast components for doing a floor. So, uh, this is the stuff that you got in your uh, packet from me. And it says in order to create a second level for the Keystone building, a new elevated floor system is going to replace the existing roof. Assume that the roof flaming, framing has to be replaced because the new floor loads will be greater than the existing roof loads. The two floor systems will be investigated for potential use as a second story floor in the Keystone Library. That's going to be the cast in place concrete on a metal deck, which is called a composite slab design, and a precast hollow core concrete panel. So we're going to research each of the floor systems used in the or as a possible elevated floor in the Keystone building. Then we're going to label all the components. Uh, and then the third thing is for each system, we're going to use the appropriate load span tables to select the most economical floor design to support the proposed superimposed floor load of 150 pounds per square foot and that's an important number for us to remember 150 pounds per square foot then we're going to note the specifications for each floor and we're going to use a highlighter to indicate the selected design on each table and we're going to give the specifications for the slab as indicated so in the packet you're going to find this picture and what you're going to do is you are going to go to uh, your, uh, here we go, got it, N engineering notebook. You're gonna cut that out. I cut mine out all the way down to just below number seven, and then you're gonna paste it into your engineering notebook. Now, once you got that done, and you can pause the video here if you like to get that finished, but once you're done with that, you're going to uh, now go into the packet of stuff that you've been given and you're going to find this diagram right here and this says preliminary second floor framing composite slab and what i want you to notice is that we have a 24 foot length here and a 10 foot length uh going across here this is uh going from uh girder to girder i believe uh that is traveling across this way so that is typical 10 feet 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet, all the way across here. And this is important. And one of the benefits of doing a composite slab floor is that it can be laid in any direction. So the composite slab uh, material can go this way or it can go this way. And in this instance, we are going to lay the floor going from uh, left to right. So I guess from west to east it would be the direction on the uh, actual building itself. Now, what we need to do is we need to go back to, or go to this page, and this is the composite floor deck. And this chart is going to be uh, really quite important. Remember our back here, I mentioned the 10 feet distance? Well, here's what you do. You come to this area of the chart right here, and you find the length of the span that you're going to want to go across and there is 10 feet right there keep in mind we have to design this floor for 150 pounds per square foot of pressure and what you'll notice is that there are numbers uh, going down here and what i'm looking for is a number that's either equal to 150 or greater than which is right here, 157. So that number is 
uh, greater than 150. 174 is also greater than 150, and that would work here in this instance. But the trouble is that uh, it would be more expensive to build this floor than it is the one above it here at 157. And if we take a look real quick, I don't think, nope, there's no others that are closer than this one. So this is going to be the one that I'm going to circle on this uh, table right here so that I know that I'm going to use keep coming back to this 157 uh, value as I uh, go through doing this uh, document. So back to this. So the first thing in this is it wants to know the span length. And the span length is 10 feet. So I'm going to put 10 feet right there. Now, slab thickness is the next thing it's asking for. So I'll go back to my chart. And I'll go to my 10 feet, 157. I'm going to come across until I get all the way over here. And this is slab depth right there. It says 4 inches. So back to this guy. So I'll write in 4 inches here. Deck type. Chart. So 10, 157, I'll come across here, tells me deck type right here, and the deck type is going to be 18. So this is, the, this is actually the, the gauge of the material, and uh, gauge just simply means uh, thickness of the uh, metal that's going down here on this thing. You'll see that again in a couple minutes. Next up, WWF. So we're going to go back to our chart. And this is going to be a little different area and this is under general information. So what I'm looking for here is a couple things. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be looking for the uh, material. It's, it's a recommended WWF 6x6. Six six. So I'm going to go back to my chart here and this is kind of a small area to write this in so I'm going to write this kind of uh, small I guess so I'm going to put in six by six back to the chart so recommended WWF six by six and then I find the thickness which is four inch right here and this is nearly impossible to read on this chart on the computer. I hope it printed better than it did here. But that says uh, W1.4 by W1.4. So I'm going to go back to this. And I'm going to put a slash. And put W1.4 by. W1.4. Okay, so now I've got that. And the last thing is the allowable unshored clear span. And right here is allowable unshored clear span. So I'm going to go to my 4 inch and I'll come to the second one up because that's my 157 right here. And you can see that on one span, the uh, allowable maximum allow is 10 feet, uh, I'm sorry, 7 feet 10. We've got 10 feet 6. And then if you have what are called three spans, it's 10 foot 6. And you'll see what this 1, 2, and 3 span thing is in a couple of minutes. So it's 10 feet 6 inches is the allowable uh, span for this particular uh, application. So back to this and I'm going to put in 10 feet 6 inches here. Okay. All right, so I took a break for a couple minutes because I wanted to finish this out. Uh, one of the things that they ask you to do is to label the uh, materials on this uh, thing. So I have done that. 
So you might want to pause the video and take a look at this and label these just like I have.